Welcome to Energy Stew. This is Peter Roth, your host. And I'd like to ask you, how are you doing managing time and space? No problem, right? <laughs> well, maybe we can do a better job and maybe our lives will improve greatly when we know how to manage it better. So in order to help us, I've asked uh, a friend and a woman who's been on Energy Stew a number of times before, uh, who is uh, an amazing master at playing with time and space. And uh, and I'm fa always fascinated talking with her because she has so many cool things to talk about. And so Marion Mace, welcome back to Energy Stew. Oh, thank you, Peter. I'm thank for welcoming you back, and I love having a chat with you. We get into we could talk for hours, so thank you for having me here. Well, I love to talk with you because you're so inventive in in ways that help us understand how life can complete itself each moment in mm. ways that so many of us feel incomplete. And, you know, are trying to put the pieces together of our lives in ways that don't always feel so complete. And so originally you and I had done interviews about working with uh, Gregory Grabovoy's uh, algorithms, numerical algorithms, to help refine reality. And that's a good place to start. And I know that you've taken it much farther than that. So let's talk about um, how you enjoy um, your working with the universe and in communication to know and receive information that is so helpful to, to us. Mm, so thank you. you. Where would you like to start? <laughs> Um, uh, probably uh, where most of us forget that our connection to whatever you want to call it, the universe, um, God, creator, source energy, we've been so taught to disconnect and we have disconnected through eons of time that we forget that we're always sent beautiful little reminders or messages. And it was when I was a practitioner over 20 years ago and I all of a sudden started to see matrices and number sequences, and I had no idea why I was seeing it, but I was fascinated. And so when Grigori Grabovoy's um, information found me, and I do believe that it finds you, you don't find it, um, they were talking about number sequences, and I said, well, I'm all in, I need to discover how you use a number sequence to harmonize the events that are not just happening around you, but anything that may be happening in your physical body. And of course, we came on this information because my husband, Brian, had had stage four lymphoma. So he used Garabawi's technologies to re um, restore his body after 35 rounds of chemo so that's how we first came to him if it wasn't for him we would I wouldn't be here with this knowledge and my first love obviously was using number sequences and it was with one of the Russian teachers that I just occurred to me this is the light language that our consciousness and our soul know so well and when we use a sequence when numbers come together they're like you know, a beautiful orchestra playing music. It is the coding, or I won't even say coding, it's the sequence together that goes to the distortions in time and space where we exist in a physical reality and unlocks the distorted information and gives it the new program a bit like this is the norm of creation. 
And so this new information moves in and starts to remove any distorted information. So you can think of it in the physical body, for instance, if you've got, you know, wanting to work on your liver or your eyesight, there is some distortion in the field that is causing your physical body to have a, a reaction. So by inserting a, a new like program <laughs> into uh, the consciousness of your body, then you're, you're starting to give it the information of the norm. And obviously what affects that is our thinking, you know, our um has this worked? Is this the right thing? Um, so when you start practicing, it's it takes a little while because you understand your body is the slowest part to actually restore because it operates at a very uh, lower vibration than your consciousness does. But when um, you play in the field of consciousness, you operate in whole different levels. We know that we've been trained to really make the left brain really strong and maybe our creative right brain is in there. Uh, we're not taught that we also have an intuition that we need to tap into. We're not taught that, you know, images, our imagination are part of our consciousness. You're not taught that if you decide to drop your physical body, that your consciousness still exists in the field. It doesn't go anywhere. But if you start to look at some of the information that comes from the outer world, um, I think Yusuf Harari, who says, you know, you don't need your physical body, just upload your consciousness into AI and you can be an avatar forever. That shows you how important our consciousness is, that it still exists whether you have a physical body or not. And then there's the remote uh, access of your consciousness that you can be anywhere on any planet. You could be here or you want to visit inner earth. Then you take your consciousness there and allow um, whatever images or whatever experiences that you're feeling, you're having to understand that that's the true reality. And then we move to how military have used remote viewing who don't need to be in the room to be able to tell you exactly what's happening in the room. So Consciousness is really strong and we need to understand the role that that plays. Um, I was telling Peter um, before about a beautiful little example because it's not until you start playing, and, and we say play because we've all been taught how to work and that's just a big no-no for me as a word, but we don't know how to play with the fabric of our reality. And I was explaining to him that um, some years ago I had had uh, too fraudulent activity on, on two separate uh, credit cards and my husband had given me two $50 bills and they just disappeared and I hadn't been anywhere. And there's something within me that understands, and I know a lot of people also experience this, this that they have almost like the blueprint of being able to see when there are distortions in the field, meaning there is not the harmony of creation um, that they can feel or see in the outer world. So to me, that was a pattern. And I don't need to be hit over the head a third time to see, okay, there's some distortion that's happening in my field that I need to shift and change. So I was talking with a dear friend of mine, an Austrian guy, and I said, Brian's not available to play with me today. Can you? And he said, sure. And he said, okay, well, put up your financial matrix. What does it look like? I said, oh, gosh, um, it's got little tiny bombs all over every square of the matrix. And he said, how are you going to fix that? And then what appeared in my imagination were little silver white spheres with the number code 91688 transfer anything from uh, negative to positive. And so I saw them in my consciousness coming down and just obliterating the dark bombs that were there. And then we started to talk a little bit further and he said, what does your money flow channel look like? To me, in the spiritual realm, it looked like a pipe. And when I observed it, there was just $1 dropping down. And I thought, hang on here. In the spiritual world, there is an abundance of everything. There's, there's no blocks in any way. So to me, that tells me there is a block. And so I used a silver white sphere, which is um, a geometric structure that we use from Grover Voice Teachings. And then I put the formula E equals VS, which stands for the, the transformation of the energy of life. 
And I imagine I would throw it up the pipe with the object of clearing any blocks in my financial um, money flow system. And then I just observed as it started to flow down and I go, okay, so it's flowing there. I do not need to then worry about how it's going to turn up in the physical world because, you know, experience has shown me if I get out of the way and I've done the harmonizing it in the spiritual world, it does come into the physical world. Then as I was play, we were playing, Hannes and I were talking a little bit further about that. And I said to him, Hannes, you know what's interesting? I can see the rip in what the matrix, in the what looks like the fabric of time and space. I can see the rip in there. It means to me that there's something that's distorted information in that fabric of my financial matrix. And he said, well, what are you going to do to fix it up? And right at that moment, I saw a golden needle and a golden thread. So I laughed. I said, well, maybe I'm supposed to sew it up. And along the way, as I started to play with that, I often, if the uh, a matrix, whatever the matrix, it could be family, it could be your physical body, it could be mental, it could be anything, um, I would notice that sometimes the the fabric or the matrix was so shredded that I'd also have to imagine that I would place a whole new matrix in there and then from the area of my heart send a, a, a golden light onto the fabric, which is gold is the colour of the creator and silver white is the, the light from your soul and pink is the light from spirit and I'd send it into the matrix and then what would happen is that whole matrix would start to lighten up all the cross sections of the matrix would lighten up and to to me I I logically I, I think well you know that's done but what happens physically for me and some others who are a little bit more practiced in it you you feel like it hits you in the chest and you go you just have a knowing it's done and so that's how I play with that and I guess I'm attuned to um, or whether it's in my template or whatever that I can see the, the distortion where their harmony should exist and that there is a distortion and then I play with geometry or play with number sequences to remove it and I just play allow my consciousness to reveal but, but this is an opportunity for all the listeners to think of their own imagination or a connection with spirit that reveals where there's, let's call it a rip in time or a rip in space. And, and then we each are different. So we each have different symbols that might appear to us that we can see need fixing. You know, something that we're familiar with that we know should look complete and yet there's something missing in it. And then our job is to imagine repairing it and in any way that we deem fit to use our hands or our minds um, or spin something or, you know, just imagine just spirit coming in, in some form or another and applying healing powers to this form, whatever the form is, you know, physical, uh, some symbol, a physical symbol uh, that represents where we need to repair something. Mm. And, and so it's an opportunity for us all to start using our imagination more to uh, make life more whole. Yeah. And I, I think what, um, because I have a very strong and have had a very strong mental body, I need to understand, you know, I need to understand what's happening so my logical brain can get out of the way. And so having the, doing the foundations, I guess, of understanding how reality is created through using Grigori Grabber Voice teachings, it then becomes very simple how when you shift a distortion in the field say for instance again we we're working with your liver or a relationship or whatever it is and you asked your consciousness to show you the geometric form that represents it it won't come up as a beautiful sphere or a triangle it look, will look like a, a distortion like an ink block or a blob or something like that and then in your consciousness you get clear what is it that you want to do because we are creators so therefore we can 
shift and create anything and, and bring back harmony. And so it might be a restoration of my liver to the creator's norm, meaning restore it to how the creator created it without any deformity. And then you start to have a look. What does the blob look like? What color? And you just um, speak to your consciousness and say, change the color. And immediately it changes. You'll say, change the form and the form will change. And in your consciousness, you can imagine shifting it slightly up or down or left or right. You can also imagine shrinking it to a tiny dot and moving it totally outside your five meters where you create. And basically what you're doing is every time you shift an element of the distortion, you it can no longer stay in the matrix of time and space, the same information. Even my objective shifts the information. Even my changing the color changes the information. And when you understand that, and that's like the basic, basic of Grabovoy's teachings, when you understand how you can change reality in your consciousness, um, then you'll understand that you can change anything. I love this. It, it, you know, and everybody listening has their own gift of imagination on what they can apply. You know, I love the idea of of an ink spot representing some issue that has its own form. And if it's the issue is messed up, the form should look messed up. And then we just see how as artists, for instance, we can reshape it and yeah. have guidance on what, what kind of, what to apply to it, or maybe rest some sacred geometry on top of it and, 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 and allow energy to, flow through the sacred geometry onto the blob because you know the blob represents something wrong that you're trying to fix we all forget that you know our physical body sits in 80 dimensions of time and space every organ every cell has its own matrix of time and space so we can play with it we're actually playing in the quantum field if you want to think about yes. that yeah and so when we shift or change or use our imagination to shift the distortion, quite often people will start to notice after a little bit of practice, they'll either feel a warmth or a tingling, which then indicates to you that the transformation process has, has started. And so we just uh, might play in the field, not necessarily always the physical body. We could play in the hologram of ourselves. And it won't matter if I shift things in the hologram, you right. will still experience something in your physical body because we're right. not just one lineal right yeah. right we, we we have a, a lot of energy around us that uh represents or represents us and yeah. and so uh but the idea is to allow ourselves to be powerful to surrender to create to being creative resourceful in um imaginative uh, in powerful ways, you know, and trust, you, you know, it's really trusting your own nature to fulfill your needs through working on it, through mending, through using tools, mending tools. And um, I love this. The whole idea of this is uh, can allow everyone to become, become so creative and, um, and, and heal so much. Mm, absolutely and um you know there's we experience we feel a lot you know there are people that are more empathic that will have experienced we've just been through we're we're in uh in no, just at the end of november well there was a very powerful full moon recently and a lot of sensitives were commenting i could see in social media oh my gosh who's really affected by the energy that's happening it just shows that we are so interconnected and I think people, as I said before, have really forgotten. And it's not our fault. We've been trained to forget just how powerful we are. But if you look at the at the opposite, look what's happened over the last three or four years where we've had such obvious programming with people. Tell, um, tell somebody via the media and you tell them a story so often that what happens is people grab hold of that idea in their consciousness 
and they believe it. And in fact, the reason why the dark aspects of our world need us because they are they can only create synthetic. They can't create the original um, creation template at all. And so that's why they're always mimicking it in pharmaceuticals or other ways. But they need us because we have the original blueprint of creation. We create, they need us. So when they put our consciousness in a direction where people believe what they're saying, we actually create the distortion in the field. This is why we can't wait for a savior or somebody to come in and um, help us out of the drama that we help to create. As soon as we understand how powerful our, we are and our consciousness is and how we send the we send the program into the field by our thinking, then we can also remove the distortion. The only reason people don't live for hundreds and hundreds of years, which is what we used to do, is because we've been taught to believe it's natural to get old and to die. And that is an absolute fallacy. If you go back and look at some of the original texts, the original books before they were adulterated by systems, Noah lived for 963 years. Masters of the Far East, in the book by T Baird T. Spaulding, he talked about how he went and studied with the masters because they were living for hundreds of years. You'll hear Greg Braden or Bruce Lipton talk about, yes, we are designed to live for hundreds of years, and the only reason we don't is because we've had our consciousness distorted and we've all been fairly well poisoned by the systems physically, emotionally, and mentally. Right, so we need to mend all that. <laughs> and and these are tools, and we really need to use tools to remove the, these, these distortions, and, uh, and our bodies will reflect that. Yeah, when you put the body in a field where there's not disharmony, and, and I think um, uh, we see that with um, Dr. Sandra Rose Michael's works, she has the energy enhancement systems where they have scalar waves and photon light which are talking to each other uh, which create a field of zero point and in the point of zero point where everything is just in the state of love the body heals the emotions heal um, any area that is a priority will will heal in that area so in the right state, if we could be in that state of pure, unconditional love in zero point where we don't have judgment of everything, anything around us, then you're in the environment that the body and the mind and, you know, the spirit can heal. Right, but we don't need a machine to do that if we can um, listen to ourselves and listen to the world around us and start feeling the distortions ourselves. Yes, absolutely. And I'm really just and talking about the people. There, there are people that need help that have had the distortion in their mind and they can't get to another way or can't heal or anything else. The, the thing about what I was trying to talk about, you know, this whole, and the Russians will talk about this, grab away, about the death program. It's like a virus in the collective. That It's such, it's held as like a, uh, distorted geometry in the thinking of people that until that whole concept until people think okay it's it's normal for me to start living beyond what i've been told that then that distortion starts to lose the power that it has and people will naturally start to live longer than that think of when they used to roger bannister did the one minute mile and and they said it couldn't be done and, you know, he did it. And then once he did it, everybody else did. So it's just how do we get people as quickly as we can then to remove the distortions in their consciousness so they step into their power and really move from there. And the vision of that happening feels so possible or likely. And uh, or let's say it will happen as we advance our consciousness. Oh, and, yeah. But it's really about waking up and knowing what we're talking about, knowing that we're responsible for the fabric itself. Mm. And, and that 
you know, we can change the fabric. Yeah. And if you think that, that like the fabric of, of our reality is like the information field, like if I want to look up right. something on the in internet, I go into a browser and put in my topic and it comes up and then I discover all this information. Well, that same information is available to you because it's stored in the area of your soul, which you are part of. And some people call it the Akashic records. We call it the point of archiving of the soul. All the knowledge is already there. And so you're not separate to your soul. You are soul having a, a physical experience. Right. So, and, and, and so I think we have to identify with our, each with our own sacredness and realize mm -hmm. the power of it and, mm -hmm. um, and, and follow this um, path of, of becoming immune to the distortions and see ourselves as whole. Uh, we're getting near the end of the show, Marion Mace. You know, uh, it's so much fun, and we can just keep coming up with things to talk about. Because um, I know you have so much experience uh, with this kind of like these ideas. But uh, how can people follow up with you? Well, they can go to our website, and it is that formula: www e equals v for victor s for sam dot com dot au e equals v s e equals v s dot com dot au so you just spell the word equals uh -huh. no that, that's so great that we can that people can learn more because i think what this has done is more like wetting people's appetite about the opportunities that we're talking about well, I, I really feel like like-minded souls are coming together to support each other. And so this will touch some people and hopefully more people. And just through our change of our consciousness, then it acts like a um, like a big snowball rolling down a hill. He can't stop what's coming. Right. And you know, I'm, I'm so excited about the future uh, and the opportunities that we have. Um, and you're such an example of, the, of the opportunity of the future so thank you so much for being on energy steel I, I love talking with you oh great to talk with you again so thanks so much peter right and this is peter roth your host of energy stew at prn.live i can be reached at peter at heart river h-e-a-r-t river.org i'd love to hear from you and thanks so much for listening <laughs>